DaVinci Resolve needs to be better. Look, I'm not a hater. Actually, I ranked DaVinci Resolve S tier in my YouTube purchase video, but a recent experience has shown me the limitation. I like DaVinci Resolve. I actually do all of my video production inside DaVinci Resolve, that including editing, including motion graphics, including visual effects, including audio mixing, and I even make my thumbnail all in DaVinci Resolve right now. It is the one-stop shop for all of my production. Until recently, I started to learn After Effects and I realized there are some features I actually like and it's missing in DaVinci Resolve. For example, proper audio support, it's never reliable in Fusion, but in After Effects, I can actually sync my animation to the audio without any frustration. And the caching in After Effects actually predictable. I'm not saying it's super great, even some simple animation can take up all of my 60 gigabit of RAM, but at least I know when it's gonna play, it's gonna play in Fusion. I have to cache my render twice, once in Fusion and once on the timeline, which really slowed down my process, especially my computer spec is a little bit lacking behind. And lastly, the most important thing make me realize the limitation is the plugin support and I'm gonna get into it very soon. Look, there are a lot of plugins in After Effects to make up for the limitation of the program itself, but there are also some tools I actually really like and I wish I can have in DaVinci Resolve, like this free plugin motion tools with a feature called Sequence Layer, which allow you to delay selected layers for set amount of time, creating a stagger animation super easily. Unfortunately, there are no way that I know of can do that in DaVinci Resolve edit page or Fusion page. Page, but what I do know is there are a scripting API in DaVinci Resolve. So maybe that could be our solution. There are many ways to write script for DaVinci Resolve. The one I'm using is called workflow integration. The reason I'm using workflow integration is that I'm more familiar with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and writing GUI and logic separately seems to make more sense to me. And it's actually not the first time I create a workflow integration. A couple months ago, I created a tool called Batch Rename Tracks. It does exactly what the name suggests. It batch renamed the tracks. For example, you have multiple audio tracks that you want to rename them into dialogue, SFX, music, etc. So you can just select the range of track you want to affect using their index and select the type of track you want to affect, including audio track, video track. And the best part there is an auto numbering system which allow you to add a number before or after the given name. With this tool, you can create a mix template super fast without a lot of trouble. So if you're interested in this batch rename track tool, I will put a link in the description down below. So let's get back to the workflow integration I'm trying to create today. What I want is I want to create a tool that deal with stagger animation like motion tool in After Effects. I want to align the selected clips to the playhead and delay each of them by a set amount of time. And ideally, I can choose to delay them from top to bottom or bottom to top. Very simple, sounds very doable, so I just got started. And very quickly, I hit my first roadblock. There's no way for me to target selected items on the timeline using the scripting API. And that's kind of insane. So if you're wondering why I require you to enter a begin index and end index in my batch rename track tool, this is for the exact same reason because I couldn't target the selected track. Because I have the experience dealing with this, I quickly figure out a workaround. So the idea is like this. The API allow me to target tracks with selected indexes and I can target all the clips on those tracks. I can also get the playhead position in time code and I can also get the begin and the end of each timeline item in frames. Before I can use this information, I need to convert the time code into frame and I need to know the frame rate. Luckily, we do have an API call to do that. And for the conversion, I just let ChatGPT handle it. I don't want to deal with a lot of string formatting and stuff. Now I just need to compare each clip on the selected tracks. If the playhead park in between the begin and the end of the clip, that's our target. I will add it to the result list. And to optimize the performance, I will just break out of this loop because 
any later clips in this track are not going to be our target. For this demo, I'm just trying to make things work. Performance is not a huge issue. If you do want to optimize it, there are tons of ways to do that. But for now, I'm not getting into it because ideally we should have an API call to target the selected item, but we don't. This workaround kind of works and I feel like I'm having a huge relief right now, but not long after I hit the second roadblock. There's no way for me to move the clips on the timeline. I spent hours trying to search for a solution. The conclusion is, it's pretty much impossible. The only workaround I can find is that you can try to put all the clips into media pool and delete the clips on the timeline and reappend them onto the timeline because that's the only API call that allow you to set the clip time. And that's kind of ridiculous and I can already think of a lot of problem can come after this. For example, you need to take consideration of how to keep your setting around like your color grading, like your positioning or everything. And that becomes a huge problem. It's not impossible to implement, but it's just too much for the simple tools I'm trying to create. And I don't think it's worth it. There's gonna be a better way to do it, which is when DaVinci Resolve allow us to actually access those features in their API. Now I'm going to be a little bit harsh. How can Blackmagic Design offer an API without basically any timeline manipulation feature? When I think of an API, I am think of something like Reaper that allow you to do anything basically. And I can easily create this tool in Reaper if I want to. Just imagine how much possibility it can open if they just allow us to manipulate the timeline items. And we do have Fusion API that allows a little bit more functionality, but it has nothing to do with the edit page. And for the simple thing I'm trying to achieve, it makes more sense on the edit page instead of Fusion. And the worst part is this API has no proper online documentation. If you're thinking of the text file they provided in DaVinci Resolve install, that doesn't count. If you're talking about the Fusion scripting guide from 2016 while we're at 2025 now, that doesn't count. It's not about the limitation of the functionality anymore, it's about the attitude. If this is how they treat the documentation of the API, it kind of indicates how much they care about it. Over the past few months, DaVinci Resolve received so many updates that includes great features, but the API functionality just always seems to lag behind. I'm not saying I'm hating DaVinci Resolve, I'm just seeing so much potential here. If we can just provide more functionality in the API, just imagine what kind of tool we can create. And after this video, I will definitely submit a feature request for this. I don't know how long will it take for Blackmagic Design to take action on this. I really doubt they're gonna do anything about it, but I'm gonna try anyway because I really hope one day in the future, Resolve API can be actually as powerful as the one in Reaper and After Effect. That's it for today's video. If you like this kind of content, please make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.